Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Blake. Today we're doing a little q and I asked you guys a few days ago on Instagram to send me any questions you guys had related to health and wellness, diet, food, fitness, uh, my health journey, body image, all that kind of stuff. And you guys did not disappoint. You sent in so many questions. A lot of them were kind of similar. So I went through and just combined what I could and tried to make a pretty concise list on my phone. I feel like I've not done a sit down like chatty vlog in so long. I also feel like I haven't just done like a regular weekly vlog in so long. I realized today that I don't think I picked my camera up once last week after I went to Nantucket whenever that was. I feel like most of my vlogs for the past couple months have been kind of like travel related. So I'm trying to get back into the groove of things, trying to get back into my regular vlogging. So we are kicking that off with a little health and wellness Q&A today. Let's get into these questions. These are in no particular order. I am just going through them as they came in when you guys sent in the questions. The first question is, how do you stay motivated? I get this question daily. The best answer I think I have for this is that it's not motivation, it's discipline. Like no one is gonna have motivation every single day. Even the people who make it seem like they're motivated every day, even the people who seem like they wake up full of energy every day, you're never gonna have motivation every minute of every day. It comes down to creating habits and being disciplined. And that doesn't sound like a fun thing. I know, it doesn't sound like an easy thing. So I always tell people to start small and start attainable and do little things that relate to your larger goals. So if your big goal that you wanna be motivated toward is working out every day, if you've never worked out, that's gonna be a very hard thing to have motivation for because you haven't felt the, re like the reward of being in the groove of it yet. So there's nothing really that's gonna drive you to do it and be consistent with it. So I think the best thing to do is start a habit. So maybe you start by doing a five minute workout every day, something that is super attainable that you can fit in the middle of your day or go on a walk every day. And I think once you start doing something every single day for weeks, how is it 30 days? It's a certain amount of days that you do something, it'll eventually become a habit. And with that comes discipline. And if you just continue to do things and be consistent, I think that's where the motivation comes in to keep doing it. I don't know if that's making much sense, but I don't ever feel motivated every day. Like it often boils down to me feeling disciplined and wanting to um, be proud of myself for being consistent. My biggest piece of advice in doing so is to start very small. It doesn't need to be like an all or nothing. It doesn't need to be a massive change. You can start so, so, so small and just gradually build up. Does that make sense? <laughs> After I just babbled at you for five minutes, this video is gonna be an hour long if I keep talking that long with every question. The next question is, what is your weekly workout split? Um, so like, what is my weekly workout routine? What different workouts do I do every day? My general workout routine weekly that I like to stick with is legs and glutes on Mondays, uh, cardio of some sort on Tuesdays, arms and abs Wednesdays, another day of cardio on Thursday, and then full body Friday, cardio Saturday, rest day Sunday. Of course that switches up if I'm traveling, I don't like to be like super harsh on myself if I need to change that up a little or like take a day off. If I force myself to never take a day off, I'm gonna end up resenting working out and I don't ever want that. So I just listen to my body and if I really don't want to one day or if I wanna do a different workout, that is so fine too. I am really big on gray area and balance and listening to my body and not just like forcing myself to do something because I've created a routine for it, you know? That's like the general, the general routine that I like to stick to. But do what works for you. Don't just do what I do because I said it. Do whatever works for you and what makes you feel good. The next question is, how do you plan out meals for the week? This is something that I used to not do at all. I would just go into the grocery store and get the most random variety of things and just come home and have zero idea what to make. And it made cooking so unenjoyable. <laughs> and I hated it. So 
I started just like gathering recipes um, either on Pinterest or thinking about my favorite meals from different restaurants and then finding ingredients online that I can use to make those things. So I've started compiling a lot of ingredients on uh, a lot of recipes on my Pinterest. I have a little board called recipes. I will link my Pinterest below if you guys want to use it. But anytime I have no idea what I want to make, I just scroll through there and I'll pick like two to three recipes I want to make each week and then I'll just get some like random snacks and things on top of that. But it makes it more enjoyable to go to the grocery store and know what I need to buy and then come home and like try out a new recipe and it does not need to be super complex. I just kind of try to have a grain, a veggie, a protein, all the, all the different <laughs> basics and make some sort of meal out of that. It can be as simple as you need it to be. But I really find that helpful in like figuring out what I want to eat each week. And instead of like meal prepping, you can also ingredient prep. So find like a variety of recipes that all use similar ingredients and then you can just prep all the ingredients. So like chop up all your veggies, have them all ready to go. Maybe have your proteins ready to go. You can have everything like cooked and in containers, but separated by ingredients so you can make a bunch of different recipes out of it. So sometimes I'll cook a bunch of things that I can add to salads or make burritos out of or tacos or, you know, just a bunch of different things that you can make different meals out of so that you're not going to get sick of them throughout the week. That is what I do sometimes. I've been pretty bad about meal prepping lately, I'm going to be honest, but I would like to get back into it because it does make my day is so much easier. This next question touches on disordered eating. Uh, I don't want anyone to feel triggered from this video, so if this is something you don't want to listen to, please skip ahead to the next question. It's going to get a little lighter from here, but I did want to touch on this question because a lot of you guys did ask it, but oh my god, there's a bag of chips flying through the air. <laughs> I thought that was a bird about to fly into my window. It was a bag of Doritos just flying through the air weird. Anyway, skip this question if you don't want to listen to this, but for whoever does want to listen to this, uh, have you struggled with an eating disorder? I don't think I've ever like struggled. I don't know. This is a hard question to answer because I have not struggled with it in the way a lot of other people have. So I don't want to say yes, but I definitely went through phases in like high school and college where I really restricted myself in terms of my calorie intake because I wanted to be a certain size or I would I would just not eat enough and then at the end of the day I would eat so much because I would just be starving and it never got to a point where it was like like I lost a ton of weight or I felt unhealthy but I did struggle with like finding a way to eat that made me feel good and where I didn't always have to think about calories and I, I got into a mindset for like a couple years where I was like just always looking at the calories and all the different nutrients and everything that I ate and it wasn't enjoyable for me and I didn't enjoy eating because I was just anxious about it um, and that's actually the reason why I became plant-based because I was I was constantly trying out all these different diets and none of them worked for me and I always ended up like going back to just eating whatever I wanted and not feeling good about it ever um and so I just like tried out being plant-based and I ended up loving it and I think that's why it's so important to figure out a way to eat that actually makes you feel good and not just do what everyone else is doing and it doesn't need to be black or white and it doesn't need to be titled, but to just figure out a way of eating that actually makes you feel good and works for you is so important. So I'm never one to be like, be vegan <laughs> because that's annoying. Um, but it worked for me and it was like, it was like a total, it was like a total 180. It just, my relationship with food changed entirely. And now I feel like I have a great relationship with food. So I guess my answer to that is, kind of in some sense I did deal with like a little bit of disordered eating where I did restrict myself a lot but thankfully I have found a way to eat that really works for me and I feel really good now so yeah we're all good now <laughs> okay on to the next question if you skipped that last question welcome back my camera's actually overheating right now so I'm gonna shut it off 
uh, and I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Next question is, how did you start your health journey? This goes back to a few years ago. I got out of a very toxic relationship where I was constantly feeling like I wasn't enough and I was very reliant on a person who made me feel like I needed them and made me feel like my worth came from how they valued me and I was just like in I was like stuck in this black hole of just like wanting to feel valued by this person and I totally lost myself in it and when the relationship ended I was sort of forced to figure out who I was again and I always I always worked out I was always pretty active but like my focus on my mental health and my like well-being was never a huge priority of mine and then the relationship ended and I decided to make a big change because I no longer wanted to um, put so much of myself into someone else I wanted to put that in to me so I started really focusing on finding out who I was and finding the things that made me really happy and focusing on my mental health and spending a lot of time alone to start enjoying my time alone and working a lot on my like relationship with fitness and all that stuff and I have somehow like it's it's become my career which is crazy like to think that something that was so bad turned into something so good and now like my whole job is about me focusing on myself and health and wellness and it's just like crazy to know that that's how it started but it really did take me like feeling like I was at rock bottom um, to push me to start working on myself and I am so proud of myself for like putting so much work into me and sometimes it really just does take like something horrible to make you turn it into something good and that is what I did and now health and wellness is a really big thing in my life and it just started with me choosing myself every day and doing little things every day that uh, were for me and not for anyone else because I was so used to doing things for someone else and thinking of someone else and I just started putting me first and you deserve to put yourself first too and that doesn't mean you don't care about anyone else or care about your kids or your significant other but at the end of the day you can't fill up anyone else's cup if yours is empty so I really encourage you to start putting yourself first or just prioritizing yourself and focusing on yourself in little ways each day and it makes the biggest difference it makes the biggest difference so that's my answer for that question oh my god my camera is overheating again what is happening Let's get back into the questions. I'm gonna to try to answer them quickly. I'm just a chatterbox and I have a lot to say. So hopefully you guys like a chatty video <laughs> because that's what you're getting. Okay, next question. I thought this was gonna be interesting to answer. It's how do you balance going out and drinking with being healthy slash what are your hangover cures? Um, if you don't drink, this might not be an interesting answer to you, um, but I do drink occasionally. Uh, if you are not of age, please don't. I'm not recommending that. Um, but I'm 26, so I do have an occasional drink. And balance is super important to me. I have talked about this all the time. I like to have um, a healthy lifestyle. That is such a subjective word. For me, that means having a little bit of balance and like letting myself let loose. And my body doesn't do well if I do that often. Um, but I like to have a couple drinks on the weekend. I'm very much a water at the bar type of girl. Like I will have uh, like two waters for every like cocktail I have if I'm walking around with a drink because sometimes I just like to hold something. It's like a social awkwardness thing for me. I think I can't just walk around without something in my hand. So I will often just have a water with like a lemon in it or something. And that is the most important thing to me is staying hydrated. I hate waking up in the mornings and feeling horrible and having it ruin my sat my Saturday or my Sunday. Um, so the one thing that I really do to like fight against feeling that way is staying hydrated and just having a couple drinks if I want to have a couple drinks with my friends. I don't like to go overboard because it doesn't make me feel good. Um, but that is like the best way that I can balance things and. 
I have a great time. Like I could fully go to a bar and be on a dance floor until 2 a.m. without any drinks. Uh, but sometimes I just, you know, want a few drinks. It's like a social thing for me. It's fun. Um, if you don't want to drink or if you do want to drink, that is your personal decision. Do whatever works for you. Uh, but yeah, staying hydrated. That is truly like the best answer I can have. That is like my best answer for everything. For having energy, for my skin looking nice. Water. <laughs> Water is my answer to everything. The next question is how to have a positive relationship with your body. This is something that I think everyone deals with. Like everyone. Everyone has days where they don't feel great in their own skin or days where they feel like they're the best thing to ever walk this earth. Like it's wild. It's like some days you're so confident, other days you want nothing to do with looking in a mirror or thinking about your body. Um, and I think that the one thing I always remind myself is that life is way too short to be consumed with something as simple as what you look like. And I know that sounds so much easier said than done, but at the end of your life, when you're looking back and thinking about all like the fun memories you made and all the people that you loved, your body is not going to be the top thing and you don't want to waste your life caring so much about it and I think having physical goals is great um, but it doesn't need to be an all-consuming thing and I, I always say that if your goal is to like like if, if someone is like oh I'm gonna love myself when I lose 50 pounds you're not going to Ch chances are you're still not gonna love yourself when you lose those 50 pounds, you're then going to be like, okay, I'm going to lose 30 more pounds then I'm going to love myself. If the love that you have for yourself is coming from what you look like and coming from something external, um, I encourage you to really try to love yourself now before you reach any of those physical goals, because then you're going to love yourself along the way. And even more so when you reach your goals, because you'll feel proud of yourself for being disciplined and reaching those goals. And I think a way to do that is positive self-talk um, or journaling or just being appreciative for having a body that allows you to do the things you do in life. So sometimes I'll write in my journal, like write down 10 things uh, that are kind to my body. So number one could be, um, my body has allowed me to travel to all these different places. My body allows me to get up and walk each day. Um, my body is strong. My body is mine and it's no one else's. My body has carried me along life for 26 years. My body is unique. My body is yada, 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 any of these things. And I think writing down these things and appreciating them and realizing that like your body is yours to love. I think it's important to remind yourself of all those little things and make sure you love yourself before you meet just those physical goals and not let that be the only reason you love yourself because you deserve to love yourself every day and you are enough. And me telling you that might not actually change your mind, but if you remind yourself of it and you are consistent with it, uh, then it does make a difference. So journaling, 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 and writing things down. Eventually you will believe them even a little bit. And I think that's so important. We're back. She overheated again. Um, it looks like it's about to start Pouring. So I'm going to try to finish this video quickly before it gets super dark and gray outside. Um, the next question is, what are your best tips for sticking to a routine? I think I kind of touched a little bit on this in the beginning of the video in terms of like starting slow and making your goals for every day super attainable. But a more specific way I think uh, that you can develop a routine is come up with your non-negotiables, whether that's three things, five things, whatever, and make them very small to start off with. So I would say my five non-negotiables every day are uh, making my bed, movement of some sort, journaling, uh, staying hydrated, uh, making some sort of like nutritious breakfast, those little things. And those don't seem difficult, right? Like they seem uh, pretty attainable. And I'm not saying like run 10 miles a day. My little non-negotiable is movement. So that could mean running 10 miles. That could mean going on a walk. I leave it pretty general so that I make sure I'm doing all those things every day, but they can be 
uh, to different extremes every day. And that is how I stick to it. And again, if you're doing all these little things that are attainable every single day, it builds routine pretty naturally because it's not something that's super difficult. It's not something that's gonna really strain you. It's attainable, it's gradual. And I think eventually you can build onto it. Oh my gosh, it is super windy. It looks like it's about to really storm. I'm not excited about that. Um, but yeah, I, I think just coming up with your non-negotiables and the things that actually make you feel good every day are really important. Don't just go on someone's morning routine and TikTok and see that they are running a mile every day, making a protein smoothie every morning, uh, going on the Stairmaster every day, like all these things. Those are super specific to that person, but come up with the things that are specific for you and make you feel good and just implement them as many times as you can during the week and like eventually they'll start to make you feel so good that you'll want to do them every day. The next question is, do you take any vitamins or supplements? I do take some vitamins and supplements and I don't take them as like something to rely on every day. I really try to get everything I need in terms of my diet, um, but I do take a daily vitamin just sort of as like a backup or to fill in the gaps if I end up not eating a ton of nutritious meals that day. It's just sort of like something that ensures that I am getting everything that I would like to get in terms of vitamins that day. Uh, so I either take the Ritual daily vitamins or the Holier daily vitamins, W-H-O-L-I-E-R. I like both of them. I also take a probiotic every day uh, and that's about it. What is your advice for how not to compare yourself to others in real life and on social media? Um, in real life, I'm gonna go back to the question about loving yourself and loving your body. It does need to come from that initially. You need to have appreciation for yourself or it's gonna be really hard not to constantly compare yourself to people. So it doesn't need to be an overnight thing. You don't need to wake up tomorrow morning and feel great. It can be something you work on every day, but I think it's a really important thing to work on and to make sure that you are comfortable in your own skin. In terms of social media, I think it's so important to filter what you are seeing. Um, so don't follow people that make you feel bad about yourself or like only follow models that make you compare yourself constantly. I love to follow people who inspire me and people who do what I do so that I get ideas. I like to follow artists and like local creators and things that actually uplift me instead of tearing me down. So in terms of social media, I just think filter as much as you can and follow people that make you feel good and not people that make you feel like you need to change yourself. What is your advice on becoming a morning person? You guys know I love my mornings. I love being up early and just like getting things done before the day even really feels like it's starting. It puts me in the best mood. It gives me so much energy. I used to not really be a morning person, um, but the way that it makes me feel has made me stick to it. Sometimes I don't wake up early, but most days I do. Why am I like choking on air? <clears throat> Are we okay? Okay. <laughs> um, some days I don't get up super early, but most days I do because it makes me feel the best. And the way I started getting up early was having little things I looked forward to every morning. So maybe you love the coffee you drink in the morning. And maybe you love to watch the sunrise. It's little things like that. Like It can be like a tiny thing to look forward to. I also have a morning playlist that I love to play in the mornings that I don't really feel like getting up. I turn that on and it immediately gives me more energy. I'll link my Spotify below, uh, but I really recommend having a morning playlist. Music is such uh, an energy booster for me. It really has an effect on how I'm feeling. And if I listen to upbeat music, chances are it's gonna make me feel energetic. Also, sleep schedule is obviously a really important one. Like try to be consistent about when you go to bed and when you wake up. Eventually your internal clock will uh, will shift to match that. At first it will be hard and your body's gonna be like, what the heck? Um, but if you get up at like nine o'clock now, maybe set your alarm for 8.55 tomorrow or 8.50. Like do increments of five or 10 minutes and then just go slightly earlier every single morning until you get up to your goal time and just make it gradual. 
and eventually you'll enjoy it, or at least that's what worked for me. <laughs> Next question is, what are your tips for transitioning to being plant-based? Uh, again, so I mentioned earlier in this video that I never try to push a way of eating on people because everyone is so different and you really have to find out what works for you and makes you feel the best. Um, but if you are someone who does feel better on a plant-based diet or you're just interested in trying it, these are my tips for that. But please don't take this as me telling you how to eat because that is never what I want to do on social media. Also, I try to say this all the time, anytime I can on social media, but I think there's this like stigma around being plant-based and people telling you that you have to be all or nothing. And I think that is so deterring for people who want to try it out. Like I've seen so many people say, I really want to be plant-based or I always say plant-based instead of vegan, just because I feel like the word vegan also means like you don't wear leather or like buy products that might not be fully plant-based. And I, I do think I have some products that might not be fully plant-based. So just to be safe, I always say plant-based, not vegan. Um, but anyway, I always see people say things like, I really want to be plant-based, but I love sushi. Or I really want to be plant-based, but I love, um, I love scrambled eggs. I don't know, that's a <laughs> weird example. But I always respond and say, okay, like have your sushi then, or have your scrambled eggs, or whatever. Like telling someone that they have to be all or nothing is not the way to inspire people to like feel good like doing what you would do or eating how you eat like if you want people to feel as good as you feel making them feel like it's like something they have to sacrifice other things for is not the way to do it my like biggest tip is that you are allowed to have gray area and not be perfect or be all or nothing it doesn't have to be black or white so that's the first thing i'm gonna say is that if you don't want to be fully plant-based, who said you had to, you know? You can you can be 90% and or whatever, whatever works for you. It's all about doing your best and doing whatever you can handle. So please take that as the most important thing I say here. Uh, but anyway, okay, <laughs> my actual tips for transitioning are, um, I think for most people it probably would be easier to do it gradually. I am a crazy person who just, did it one day and never stopped. I planned on doing like a 30 day trial. So just one day I just started eating fully plant-based and it's been seven years and I somehow never stopped. But I know that that is not a realistic approach and I know that that's not the case for most people. So I think the best way to do it is to be gradual with it. And initially it is like, it's, it's different. It's gonna be like a little bit of a learning curve and learning how to get all your nutrients, but it is super important in any way of eating I guess it doesn't matter what source you're getting things from, um, no matter if you eat meat or whatever or not, uh, but it is important to make sure you're getting all the vitamins and nutrients you need every day. It doesn't matter what source you're getting them from, but it is really important to be cognizant of those things. So when I first started, I did track a lot of things, like nutrient-wise, not calorie-wise, but just to make sure I was getting all the nutrients I wanted, and now it's like second nature and I don't have to do that. Um, but finding recipes online and finding different ways to cook and finding interesting recipes that are fun to make is going to be better for you long term than just being like, oh, I have to eat salads every day, you know, like it can be way more fun than that. And if you try out different recipes, uh, you will have a much more well-rounded diet and you'll be exposed to new foods you maybe wouldn't have tried before. So it's really important, I think, to do some research and figure out where you can get certain nutrients and protein and all these vitamins from and find new recipes that maybe you wouldn't have cooked before because it can be way more fun than just eating salads. People think I just eat salads and um, that is not the case <laughs> at all. So make sure you are um, just being a little bit conscious initially about what you're eating and making sure you are like giving yourself all the nutrients you need and eating enough. I think that's the most important thing. I really thought it was gonna start storming out, but it actually is getting really sunny out. So the lighting might change in here. Um, we have a few questions left. The next question is, is there a mindset you find helpful on days where you feel insecure and don't work out? Yes. <laughs> on days where I'm feeling insecure, because we all have them, I try to 
fill my time with things that make me happy. So sometimes that means um, reading a book or again, journaling and writing down things I'm grateful for or things that I love about myself. Just like reminding myself that I can feel good about myself even on days where I'm not perfect or I'm not working out or I'm not eating great. I think it can be really easy to get into like a slump. I have kind of been feeling that a little bit lately and I just think it's important to remind yourself that tomorrow's a new day. Don't be too hard on yourself. You're the person that's gonna be the nicest to you or should be the nicest to you. Um, and you deserve to be nice to yourself. Like you can't expect anyone else to be nice to you always. So you have to at least rely on yourself to be kind to yourself. Next question. I want to start going to the gym and working out, but where do I start? How do I start? Gyms are so intimidating. If you have never been and you don't know what you're doing, I'm going to be totally honest here. I typically avoid equipment at the gym because I still feel like I'm not like great at using it. So I often do body weight exercises or just like use weights when I work out. I don't often use the machines, but I think it is so hard to remember that most people in the gym, there's maybe some exceptions, but most people in the gym are focusing on themselves and might feel insecure themselves. No one is worried about what you're doing. No one's gonna judge you. Everyone started somewhere. Everyone started from the bottom. No one just was born a bodybuilder <laughs> and no one's gonna judge you. And there are a lot of people that will help you. There are a lot of people you could ask or just watch. You can also look up videos on YouTube about how to use certain equipment. Um, I think it's really helpful to look up videos on YouTube to follow workouts. Pamela Reef is um, a fitness instructor that I like. Just don't, don't feel discouraged because you don't know what you're doing or you don't know where to start because every single one of us has felt that way. And if you need to start out by working out in your living room to kind of get in the groove of things and feel like you wanna get your form right before you go into a gym, then do that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how you start or when you start. Um, but just starting is gonna make you feel really good if that's something you want to do. Daily practice makes progress in anything that you do, so it's okay to start small and then gradually build up. We are on to our last question, and I think this one is an important one to end on. This question is, how do you maintain a healthy lifestyle long term? So many people struggle with starting a new diet or starting a new really intense workout and not being able to stick to it because it's not... It's not super reasonable, it's not attainable, uh, it's not enjoyable. Uh, so that's why I always, always stress doing things that are small and attainable because making those little tiny lifestyle changes is something that you will stick with. Telling yourself you're only allowed to eat kale and like lean protein all day every day and you have to run 10 miles every day, that might give you really quick results but your event, you're, you're gonna quickly go back to whatever you were doing before and those results will probably go away. If you want long-term results and long-term like mental health results, I don't, I don't mean physical results, they can be physical results, but if you want a long-term change in how you feel or how you look, any of that, it is so important to make it attainable and make it small and don't just jump into the deep end. Like you can start as small as you need to my lifestyle used to be so different than what it is now. Maybe it didn't look very different, but it felt very different and I did not feel good in my in my skin. I didn't feel good in terms of working out or how I was eating or any of that and it's crazy how different it is now and that was years ago and I have somehow stuck to it and I can't even imagine my life any different now. So my one piece of advice is to just make it attainable. That is like the most important thing I can stress for any any health or wellness change is just to make it start small make it attainable and make it work for you and that is my that is my best answer for that those are all the questions if you guys have any of your own health or wellness tips or want to share your own health or wellness or fitness journey please do in the comments i would love to hear about it i would love to hear if you guys have any tips or tricks that you want to share with other people or inspirational stories or whatever, I would love to hear it. And I imagine that people watching this would also love to hear it. I feel like my goal with these like sit down chit chatty videos is 
to be a little more personal and to get to know you guys a little bit better and to let you know me a little bit better. So I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for sending in questions. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys.